Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni if you're new here and I'm an acrylic artist and instructor. I'm going to show you guys step by step exactly how to paint this pretty black and white winter holiday landscape. So I'm using a 9x12 primed canvas today and I just used some Liquitex Basics Acrylics Gesso. Even though the canvas said two to three times primed already or double primed already it never hurts to apply uh, another coat of gesso and I found over the years that it does make a difference if I skip adding the gesso my paintings tend to be a little bit duller and darker looking than when I do take the time to apply one coat of gesso so it doesn't take too long it's not expensive and it's really worth your while to do it so you're going to need a few different brushes for today's painting any size canvas you want turn it portraits ways like this um, you can turn it landscape so if you decide to turn it this way which is landscape um, it'll it'll kind of change the dimensions and everything it'll still look really pretty but this is how I recommend if you want it to look like this and this format then turn your canvas this way so of course we're going to be using some black and white I've got Mars black and titanium white you can use any black or white of your choice doesn't really matter now I'm going to be using a little bit of this is light olive green you can use yellow and black you can mix yellow and black to make this color or something similar to it you can also use a sap green um, or hooker's green if you want any type of yellow yellowy green um, and I'm also going to be using some crimson red this is by Arteza and any red will work so choose any color red that you want and that for now I may or may not add a few other colors along the way but I'll be sure to list everything below the video in the description box for you guys so we're going to go ahead and get started. To begin this painting, I'm going to use my number 30 filbert brush. What I want to do with this painting is I'm going to start with white and I'm going to go around in a circular, circular oval shape and then I'm going to widen it and I'm gradually going to come in around the outside with the black and in the reverse direction, pull it in to meet the white and then it'll be ombre. So kind of like a dark grayish to gradually transitioning to white. So to start this, I'm gonna get my brush just a little bit wet, dry off any drips, and I'm gonna take my white. I'm just gonna go around, like I mentioned. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more. Okay, so we've got white there without washing my brush off I'm just going to take some black and I'm going to start gradually coming in around the sides nice and gently not too too much paint and definitely don't want to have a lot of water on your brush or it's going to be very difficult to get the transition um, nice and soft like this So you can scumble around with your brush a little bit as well. Now I'm going to take a little bit of white with mine and I'm going to line it up halfway here, halfway on where I left off and halfway on the white. I'm going to work this up into my black. Take a little bit more. And continue the same process. Remember that the black that you add, even with a little bit of white like this, is going to dry a shade or two darker. So I'm always more generous with my white. Unless I want it to be completely black. Now I'm going to need a little bit of water. So I just kind of want to work that into my brush, mix up that paint that's kind of starting to make its way to the top of here and it can possibly ruin those bristles. So I wanna just make sure that I'm mindful of that. Gonna work a little bit quicker here. It's kind of 
warm here in my studio slash kitchen. I've got a bunch of smaller canvases that I'm working on and it works well here in my kitchen. Um, I will be going back to my studio soon when I go back to larger canvases. But these smaller canvases are really nice because it helps you guys learn how to paint uh, some smaller sizes. Like you can paint all these scenes, all these Christmas holiday scenes I've been doing on Christmas cards and Christmas ornaments. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that black now. And work my way down here, making it a little bit darker. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush out. And I'm going to take a little bit more white, light gray. See, I've just picked up, just tinting it a little bit with that lighter gray. Line it up, twist. There we go. I'm just going to take my mini filbert brush here and just dab full strength, just heavy body titanium white right here or any white that you want. If you're using, this is a cool white, titanium white's a cool white. So it's going to be um, more of a cool gray. And yes, there are different temperatures and tones to uh, black and white. Um, and if you're using a warmer uh, white, then it's going to take on more of a warmer gray. Either one is beautiful, and I don't really recommend one over the other. I think both, I've done it with both, and they both look really pretty. In fact, you'll get more of an old-fashioned, almost sepia kind of, leaning towards the sepia if you use a warmer uh, white. You can even also pull in a little bit of yellow ochre and burnt sienna to really Add, add the sepia tone to it. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this off and then we're gonna come in with the next step. We're gonna start building up a soft little landscape back here, little cottage, fence, um, trees, whatever else that kind of comes to my mind. I'm working um, intuitively right now, so I don't have any reference photos or anything that I'm going by or looking at. And this is how I like to create 99% um, of the time. Okay, so it's all dry now and I've got a number four filbert brush. I'm gonna get it a little bit wet. And what I wanna do is start to pull in some trees here in a really simple way. I want them to show up, so I need to choose a shade darker than what I've got there. A Little bit more water. You want your paint to be not dripping, but more on the thin side. So a little bit watered down. And I'm just gonna start, see that, just a light little Pull, flick, so just, it's in your wrist, right? So just practice this uh, technique. And then you just have your brush there, just the very tip of it. And I'm gonna make them smaller and smaller. Kind of wipe the excess off there, it's a little bit wet. And then underneath, you can pull off of, and this is just gonna be a reflection in the water, I'm just deciding right now. We'll have some water down here. And then I'm just gonna cut across like this for a little reflection in the water. And I'll take a little bit more black, a little bit more water here, and maybe add one or two trees here. So just pull a thin tree trunk and I'll just start tapping side to side for some little branches like this. And then a 
this subtle reflection here in the water. So if you want, you can turn your painting upside down to get this mirrored look, or you can turn your brush the opposite way. You wanna get those, you don't wanna to try to make it look exactly the same. It's gonna be kind of tough. And you really don't need to, as long as you have it kind of similar and a little softer and blurrier looking. So you don't need to use um, black, as much black as you used up top here. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in on this side and add a little bit more. A little bit more water here, maybe pull in a little bit of that light gray. Slide my brush side to side, pick up a little bit more here, and then do a gentle little pull and flick. A little bit darker, add a little bit more black up here, make these trees a little bit darker. This looks pretty already. And then a gentle back and forth brush stroke here. Move a lot of tree. It's going to be taller than this one. Right about there. This tree trunk just a little bit thicker. And then I'm just going to go over this to make it look a little bit more subdued and not compete too much with what's going on up top. So just slide your brush, create all those little squiggles to give it more of a ripply look. Okay, now I want to add some snow on the trees. So I'm going to use the same brush here. And I'm gonna go right into my white, no water. Just gonna place my pinky here where I know it's dry. That helps to steady your hand and give you more control when applying your uh, details like this. There's just something about uh, black and white uh, artwork, photography, paintings. And the, the nice thing too is that you can always go back and add color to it after. Um, a lot of artists work in a process of grayscale. So they'll do all their paintings in grayscale first like this and I'm just gonna come in here and just start coming in with some trees here in front of those ones in the background, making them a little bit lower. So just with white only. And then just a little bit of snow kind of going down, swoop, swoop. little reflection. So 
we've got this white here and I'm going to add a reflection down below so just line it up from the sun underneath and then wiggle wiggle tight little wiggles I'm going to get a little bit of paint on the very tip of my brush here come in with another layer and I'll start adding some snow to this side. Now you can decide if you want yours to be uh, winter or you could you could also do this and, and make it summer. So what you could do is add a little hint of some olive or sap green um, to, to your black if you wanted to change up the seasons or you could leave it just black. It looks really pretty how it is too. But this is a holiday and winter tutorial, so I'm gonna add some snow to mine. Now the, the harder you push and the more white that you apply will be the deciding factor of how snowy you want your trees to be. You could just do a light little frost, so that would just be obviously less pressure and less paint. I think I might have a, hmm, maybe a, I wanted to add a, cab, a little cabin somewhere. I think I'll have a little cabin maybe down there. I was going to add some trees here, but if I add some snow here, then my cabin might not show up well enough, so I'm going to keep that dark back, back there. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of a reflection here. Put a little bit more snow here. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with uh, a little cabin. I think I'm going to switch over to my smaller brush, my smaller filbert brush for this. You could use a round brush, a small flat brush if you want. And I'm gonna use just straight black first because I know this will really show up here. So I always paint my little cabins uh, the same way. Simple, a little diagonal line, slightly scooped. Another one on the end, slightly scooped. This is gonna be, I've just decided it's in front of the tree. And then I'm gonna pull across and then side to side. I'm going to paint it in the direction that it goes, so diagonally like that for the roof. And start the other side. And then I'm going to bring in the side of the other side of the house by tapping. Just so that it kind of has a feel like a log cabin or a log house. It's a little bit more cozy. And I'm going to take a little bit of white, figure eight crisscross just to blend it up nicely in a small spot. You don't want to be over taking way too much space um, to mix your paints up because when you do that, you're just wasting your paint. You're just spreading it around and painting your palette and you want to keep it all in, in a small space. So you're not wasting it, if that makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to paint this in now around the side here. This time, obviously, I'm just 
uh, choosing a, a lighter color, lighter shade. And I'm going to just take a little bit of white now. And I'm going to pull and drag inside the roof. I'm going to bring the roof down a little bit lower. Wipe off that excess gray that I'm picking up or black. I don't want to push too hard here. I'll, or I'm just going to be pulling off the paint. And I'm going to pull some lines. Start pulling a few little lines in like that. that I'll be able to add more as the paint starts to dry. Come in with some more black now. Add more of a roof line and shadow. So right under the roof. And then I'll add a little chimney, a little dab, and then a little line like that for um, a shadow. And then I'm going to take white and what I'm going to do is with my white I'm going to line it up and just start to gently create little circles for the smoke coming out here. I'm just going to soften my shadow up so I don't want it to be as black as the chimney. I'll take a little bit more white here. And more white again. The step will be easier once it's dry. So I'll come back to that after. I'm going to switch over to my liner brush now. This one is a micro mini liner brush. It's short. It's number 10. It's by Princeton. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to take some white with a little bit of black, so just kind of like a grayish color here. Make sure you don't have any water drips on there. And I'm just going to apply some lines side to side, reload my brush. You can paint any kind of Make your little cottage, cozy cottage, any style that you want. This is just um, how I like to, and I've been painting my little houses and cottages the same way for years. Simple, 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 so everybody can follow along. Okay, and a little dot for the notches on the end of the logs. And we're not going to see a whole lot this way because it's more in shadow on this side, but maybe a little bit of snow here on the ends and some lights in the window. So we want to use white for this. Oops. And I'll add a little loft up there, a window up there for our loft. A window there, and then one for our door. 
I'm gonna go right over to my black clean up that line there add just a little bit more here to my chimney and I'll go around and outline everything here in my door windows that was way too thick I'll, I'll fix that in a minute black in here for the other side of the house whoops and I'll come back in Just add a little bit more inside the window there. Okay, so I think, yeah, I just had an idea. I think what I want to do is use this brush, or maybe I'll use this one. Yeah, I think I'll use this one. I'm just going to start to pull in a little bit of land on this side, and then I'm going to add a little bit of bushes. I'm going to be using um, either my oval my one inch oval mop brush here or my one inch angle mop brush. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of black here. This is gonna be our first uh, base color. So I'm gonna just start pulling off to the side. So see, I'm doing a line and then pulling over, over, over. And then I'm gonna come and bring it here into the foreground. So we still have our reflection there. We have what we haven't done is the reflection of the house. Uh, maybe maybe I'll do that. I'm just gonna add um, some bushes here first, or some snow covered something. <laughs> and um, let's see what else could I do. I know I'm gonna be coming in here with with something, and I just feel like I'm liking this sort of a S curve. Sometimes I'm, I'm led by uh, shapes and then I make a scene out of them or in them, within them. going to wash this out and like I mentioned I'm going to switch over to one of my <clears throat> excuse me awesome little mop brushes here this one is my oval mop without getting it wet I'm just going to tap right into my white okay so I don't have a ton on there just a little bit and I'm going to start above and partially on the black that way we're left with that nice shadow and we're bringing up a little bit of height here so it doesn't look like our house is sort of floating on the water. And then just a soft little, make it sort of disappear. Soft little circles. Get rid of kind of blurry, dreamy, powdery look to it right about there. I'll adjust a little bit more now. And then just a light, give it that sort of a bit of an icy look. A dry brush. And I'll add a little bit up here as well.
Maybe there's some icicles or something right there. I'm gonna wash that brush out. Grab a little bit of water on my filbert here. And blend this around. Now what you're seeing mostly here is just water. It looks kind of white, but it's gonna dry clear. I just wanted to take a little bit of that off and add a little bit more white, just straight white here. And back over our sun or moon. More snow, I can do another layer now or add another layer, I think. Okay, so clearly I need to wait for that to dry. While I'm doing that, I'm going to, I'm torn with two things right now. I wanna do the reflection, but I also wanna add a little bit more of a icicle kind of effect here. So um, just gonna take my little liner brush here and add a few little squiggles. So it's just gonna look like, um, like a carrot, like a really bumpy carrot. A little bit of water. That's what icicles kind of remind me of. With a few little lines. And What's next? We'll work on a reflection. So I'm not gonna do too, too, I'm not gonna try and mirror it, but I need a little something there because there's, we can see a bit of a reflection of everything else. So we'll just kinda pull here, a few little dark grayish lines, water on my brush. Now, if you need to turn your painting upside down for this, like I mentioned earlier, that's how a lot of people do it. If you really want that that mirrored look, um, that'll help a lot. And I'll just add a little bit of white wherever I see white. Whoops, I've got a bit too much water there on my brush. A little bit of white. And then for the roof, we've got a little bit of smoke reflecting from our chimney. All right, I'm just gonna come in with a little bit of gray and my smaller filbert brush now. Make some of this a little bit darker, like it is above. And then slightly blur it up a little bit just by going over. I'll add just a little bit more white. Right here and here. And then kind of just Wiggle around for the smoke. Oh, I almost forgot my little loft window up top there. Anyways, that's how much uh, detail you want to add, but I'm going to add a little bit more foliage in here or snow. And 
there maybe oh I don't know maybe another tree right here and I'm just gonna go straight in with white this time I like to do this I like to have some trees I love that look when you don't even see anything else on the tree it's just all white you could just do a painting all in gray and white you don't even have to have black and that looks really pretty too Am I able to add this white yet to the roof? Just using a thick amount. I like that look better anyways. Get that heavy snow look. It looks kind of lumpy and more real. come in sometimes with a little liner brush and make some of the snow on my trees a little bit thicker <clears throat> just by wiggling a little bit you don't have a little bit of a fence over here I'm gonna use a little bit of black first with my filbert brush and I'll just start coming in with a few little lines here and then you just kind of disappear off up that way and then I'm going to pull down lower right here and then so this one they start to get a little bit longer thicker and darker as they get down here in the foreground closer to us like this Now, shadow's going to be because the sun or the moon is reflecting this way, so we're going to have a little shadow. Of each one. Not straight black, right? You just want to have it a little bit transparent. Okay, with thin paint, I'm going to start kind of just barely touch right there and then where it gets closer to us we're gonna bring in a board so you really feel like it's curving around a little bit more black And we'll add some snow. Okay, clean brush. on the edges where the light will be hitting Maybe I'll add, um, let this one come down a little bit lower and I'll add another, another board right there. I think that looks nice. 
and wash all that black out, go right back into my white. Add a little bit more right there. And tap, tap, tap. Make little taps for that snow. Actually, I'm gonna be a little bit more generous right here just because I really want this to feel a little bit more here in the foreground. Okay, so I think it's time to start coming in with some color. I just want to add a little bit of color here and there because I really like that classy kind of old-fashioned look, adding a little bit of color to black and white in, in this painting today anyways. Um, but as I'm just noticing here, as this white is drying, I kind of can't see it as much, so I'm gonna, there, that looks better. And I might have to add a little bit more later Add a little bit more there to my smoke coming out of my chimney. Um, what's next? Just a little bit of black here along the edge. a little bit of a shadow here too from these boards aren't we you can't forget about those I mean you could but I think it looks a lot better if we add them so remember you just want to have some thin watered down paint or a dry brush of light gray Okay, so I'm going to start adding some holly up here and I'm going to use black. Let me just pull this a little bit closer. Black and green. Just to start. Okay, and I'm going to add, I'm going to place my pinky right here and I'm going to start like this, a little line. Scoop, 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 scoop. Same thing from the other side, and then bring it in. Okay, so there's one. On another one, I'm gonna make this one a little bit smaller. This is the first base. We're gonna make it stand out a little bit better here in just a minute. And we're gonna have our little berries in here too. And then I'll add oh, an even smaller one right here. Okay, then I'm going to come in with more green, but pick up a little bit of white this time. I'm going to work that paint out of my brush, use some of that. And apply it inside each of the leaves so it's a couple shades a couple shades lighter here but we're leaving it outlined in dark and add a little bit more now And I'm going to switch over to my liner brush and make the ends of them stand out a little bit more and be pointy. So I'll use my black, mostly black, a little bit of green in there.
So I'm just going to do each one like this. I'm going to water down my brush a little bit here, and I'm going to pull a line. Maybe just a little bit more black to make this show up a bit better. And then from each point, I'm going to pull in, in, in. You could add a few in between if you want as well. Something anyway, sort of like that. And then I'll give them a little bit more of a, a frosty look inside. And I'm gonna add a little bit more, mm, let's see. I've got a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of phthalo blue. So I'll see what color I prefer best, or maybe I'll use a little bit of both. I'm gonna mix um, a little bit of phthalo blue with my olive green and see what that looks like first. So I'll take a little scoop of each. A little bit of white. I think I'm gonna use a little bit more of my olive green. I like that. It might be a nice, a nice color to add here. whatever green you want really Okay, I just took a couple of seconds to dry this off a little bit so that I could apply the paint a little bit easier. I'm going to switch over to my small filbert brush and it'll be uh, easier as well just because this is getting a little bit bigger. If you pick up a little bit of black here and there that's fine. They're in there depending on you know if the plate's hitting them in different areas causing it to be a different tone, brightness. I'm just going to dry slightly darker than this too. gonna go right over this because I know those lines will show up once it's dry. Okay now I'm gonna paint some berries. So I'm gonna do let's see red with a little bit of black first for my base. And again I'm using um, crimson red if you didn't see at the beginning crimson red you can use any red you want. four and then I'm going to take a bit more red this time 
and I'm gonna go inside each of them. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of white This could be um, a little bit of snow or a highlight. I think I like that snowy look. Just gonna add a little bit more. I'll be able to do this once it dries too. Go add a little bit of snow inside part of these leaves. a little bit there a little white highlight here and there it's just gonna bring up that shade of green a little bit lighter bit more red now on the inside a little bit more white you can wait for it to dry or you can add it really gently and you know Kind of liking this, so I think I want to add a few more berries here. I like the bit of red. So the black first, then the red. I have a few up there as well. I'll take a little bit of my red and white. Back to my black and my green. And add a little leaf here. And maybe we won't see these other ones very much. They kind of just go off the canvas. Take a little bit of white. Some more red, a little bit more red and white. Scarlet, a little bit of scarlet red would look really pretty too. I'm gonna make this snow up here look a little bit thicker. A 
And all I'm doing is just very lightly pulling and blending along here to work a little bit of that white out. Maybe we'll have some, maybe some silver bells right here, kind of around. We'll add a couple silver bells, so a little circle, and then a line, and I'll just make that stand out a little bit more. A little bit more white. So you're just going to create a little circle, and then scoop out. And pull a little line. I'm going to switch over to my liner brush just so I can make this a little bit easier. I'm going to take a little bit of black make the inside darker Take a bit of white and then do a little loop, a little dab there and then a little hook here loop where it goes and wraps around the bell and then I'm going to take some white and kind of go up and around. And that way we can see the inside of the bell a little bit. And we can also see the little bell itself. So you can just add like a little line inside and then a little ball and maybe a little tassel. widen that just a little bit make this a little bit smaller and I'll add a little bit of black to it for a shadow and now we'll work on the other one A little bit of a highlight right here. Okay, so there's one bell, and then I'll have the other one right down here. Take a bit more white, do that same shape helps just make that circle and then a line comes out a little bit wider. I'm going to take some black and go up, slightly scoop up like that and more white. Highlight that little area there where it joins up with the other one. I'm going to go up with my white and then add a little dot and tab, little short little line here, and then white for the bell. Or the little thing that shakes around in the bell to make that sound. So to make the bell look shiny, you just want to take some white and do some little lines kind of in the middle of your bell like this. Or off to the side if you want.
And then I'm gonna add a red ribbon. Um, first, I just wanna make sure that I have enough black here outlining this. Make sure this comes down a little bit lower. And then I want to dry this off and I'll add a pretty red ribbon. And take a little bit more of my red and just brighten these berries up a little bit. And then a little bit of white again. And then a little bit extra. I want it to look kind of like snow. have a few other berries too if you wanted just easily by overlapping with a little bit of either lighter or darker red whatever will show up so right here I'm gonna put one right in front here just take off the excess paint that's building up on my brush Add a little bit of snow. And then outlining with a little bit of black too will really make your berries look 3D. So it all depends on like how much detail and shadows you want to create in yours. I really like the frosty look of things on Christmas cards and the old vintage look. So I'm just going to add a little bit more frost here just by taking a dry brush with a little bit of white. I like that. I think that kind of fits in a little bit better with our tones that we have here and frosty look. A little bit more green with that. And then a little bit of white. Okay, now for my ribbon. I'm gonna use my liner brush and let's see. I'll take some red with a little bit of black. Well, a lot of black. dab here little so a little circle and then triangle with rounded rounded ends I know it's hard to see because it's so dark right now and then another one on this side And then the tassels or the, the ends of the ribbon 
have them coming out here. Now this is going to show up better when I don't have the other one. Uh, maybe I'll bring it out right here in front of the bell. Okay, I'm just going to uh, dry this off. I'll take the excess off here because it'll take too long to dry and I've got quite a bit on here. I'll dry this off and then we'll add the highlights. Okay, so we are ready for some highlights. I'm going to take my red, a little bit of white, just a little bit, and I'm going to dab right there in the middle, partially over and then come inside. So I don't want to completely cover up the dark black red base that we have. We want to keep it sort of outlined. So I'm going kind of below. I'm going to leave the dark line right there so it looks 3D. And then I'm going to come around here, scoop and pull in. Now I'm going to take some more white. Go right there. It's going to dry a little bit darker than what you're seeing here. I want to have it kind of brighter here, so I'm applying my white on the outer edge, and then it's going to be darker inside. So I'm just going to take a little bit of black and go around. Make that stand out a little bit more, or my black-red mixture. Just make sure there now we can call these silver bells right maybe that's what I'll title this painting even though they're kind of small I think I would like to title it silver bells Use a little bit of white again. Rebrighten those. I'll add a little bit of a highlight here to my ribbon as well. Just on the ends here with my little bit of that white and red mixture. And oops, I need a little bit more white here. Okay, so I'm going to call this painting all done. This was so much fun. I'm glad I got to share it with you guys. Hope you had fun watching and that you want to paint along. Feel free to share this with your painting groups, family, and friends. 
and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more. It all helps put my videos out into the algorithm on YouTube so more people can learn to paint and paint along with us. Have a wonderful day and Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all soon in my next video. Bye, everybody.